Okay, guys, we're back. Let's see if we can actually make this jump instead of roll this time. Welcome back to Bloodborne. Turn Grigo Ham here, and we made the jump. Here it is, the Grave Guard Mask, and then we will uh, roll down and get the rest of the set. There it is. Let's show it off real quick. We've been wearing this uh, Iron Helm for a while. As you can see, not great physical defense, but much better arcane fire and bolt defense. I'm just not uh, sold on the face. The rest of it I like. Uh, could do with a little less poindexter on the hat, but you know, it's not too bad, I guess. Uh, you can also run over here if you don't want the hat that's up top and you just want the set, which obviously if you're going to leave a part off, you're going to leave the hat off. Uh, so you can run across from the other side there. And we're going to head down here where we had the other snake guys. And our other piggy piggy. There he is. Those guys are just nothing anymore. If you got snatched early uh, to Hapaji in jail, there is a good chance that those were a nightmare for you. The one in the hall, uh, one in the hall in our starting area, not so bad. But uh, for whatever reason, the way they had them set up in Hapaji in jail, the first time I got taken there way too early. Uh, they really messed me up, did a number on me. The snake. The snake. Gosh. Uh, that's the uh, swampy area that we found a while ago at the end of the celestial tunnel. Have this, which is obviously a trap. Murky blood gemstone. I think we got all the snake guys that were patrolling around here. Yep, looks that way. Uh, this set very much reminds me of uh, maybe a Pyromancer's outfit. I don't know. I like it. Uh, yeah, this is... Over the uh, swamp that we found earlier. Uh, we cleared out all of that over there, so we'll just pick up from down here. Firefly Poo Lake. No, thank you. Don't call your friends. Here is our unused shortcut. We will never use this shortcut, but we'll go ahead and unlock it. Back to the tower where we uh, killed the cannibal. I swore there was an item up here. I did. We? Maybe I'm losing my mind. Maybe we picked it up before we went in the shortcut. Okay, now just head down the poo swamp. And we'll make our way to the next boss. Uh, yeah, this way. We're gonna have some more of those uh, swamp lurkers down here. I don't know if you guys have noticed, I'm really not into names. I give them my own names. These guys are swamp lurkers. I don't care what they're really called. Every time you find them, they're in some kind of poo infested water. 
Dissipating lake. Uh, like I mentioned a couple of videos, videos ago, anytime you see lake, it's going to be some kind of resistance room. One more, yep. And one more pig. Back to max blood vials again. So we'll go ahead and oh. Well, I meant to do this first. Be two here. And a sharp blood gemstone. Okay, so there we go, guys. We made it through the snake pit of hell. Path to the shortcut. So once you open this gate, there'll be a rune in here. Kill this guy. Clockwise metamorphosis. So we have two options. We can double up on stamina. We can double up on vitality. Whatever floats your boat. And then up here you'll notice this just kind of drops you back into Snakeville. Down there the red pit where the double snakes were. Okay, so uh, we're at our next boss. Let me go ahead and take him out. Um... This is a trio of guards. Um, they guard somebody specific. So I don't remember her name, but every time you find her in the game, you will always find three of these guards shortly before her. Uh, these are just the most powerful versions that you will find. These are actually strong enough to be their own boss. So we're gonna leave the oil urn on. It's unfortunate that we didn't uh, go back and pick up any Molotovs. Leave the beast rune on. We're not gonna need any poison or anti-poison. So now we can beast roar to uh, knock them back. We'll oil urn them so that our weapon does more damage. Uh, but basically you wanna focus one down and then, you know, focus the next one down, focus the next one down. Uh, try to really uh, focus one and there is a caster. It's always better to start out with the caster mm. Did I get him yeah, I did go one down go after the flaming katana bro next hit him with another oil urn there we go last guy now this guy's gonna call some snakes. The snakes are gonna plunge at you. It's gonna hurt a lot. Take that. You're dead. You just don't know it yet. Nope, uh, nope, 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 nope. You're still dead. Stop calling the snakes. There we go. Got him. Prey slaughtered. So, uh, this next area is pretty short. Um, we're not ready to kill Rom yet. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and clear the area out and get all the goodies out of it and, uh, get ready to take him down. Um, but we're gonna leave and go do some other stuff first because once you kill him, a lot of areas uh, kind of change. Uh, and we wanna make sure we knock everything else out that we wanna do before we kill him. Uh, that includes 
And it's not that the area changes, but I do want to do Kanehurst uh, Castle before we kill Rom. Uh, just to get it out of the way. These guys? Oh, you're fixing to find out. They frenzy you, and it really, really sucks, man. Let it wear off. I don't have any sedatives on me, I don't think. You're gonna jump up. Anytime they jump up in the air, just, you know, take a couple of rolls. You definitely don't want to be grabbed by them. Good thing is we do have a pretty strong weapon, so we should be able to make it through here pretty easy. Item back here, Madman's Knowledge. And we do have one of our other favorite uh, enemies, the ones that like to grab you uh, and hold you in place and, and take away your insight, so. Not very many enemies here, but the ones that are here are uh, kind of strong. Not if you get the drop on them, though. Here's our first sedative. We are going to put that on the bar. So if your frenzy starts building up, you can take that. This guy's going to run at us from over there. So we may as well meet him halfway. for him to come down because uh, the guy that likes to grab you and take your inside is up there on the hill and we want to take care of this guy before we go up there you can sneak behind this guy and get a backstab really uh, really easily he's on the other side of this tree right here Oh, unless you hit the tree, I guess. <laughs> That's alright. Our weapon is too OP. I love how strong our weapon is, knowing that I don't have anything beyond its basic requirements as far as stats. 16 and 12. Love it. Alright, so as we go down here, a couple of those uh, guys are going to drop off the edge two of them at the same time. It's fantastic. Alright guys, come on down. I know you're gonna jump down. There we go. I've never been able to successfully pull one without the other. Nope, nope. Oh, he got me. Run away, run away. Just need the bar to start moving down again, please. Okay. Got it under control. Let's go take care of the other one. Uh, now there is an enemy over here and unfortunately, I believe he is strong to elemental attacks. So uh, it take us a bit to take him down, I think. Possibly. I guess we'll find out. Whenever he does fly into the air, uh, you don't want to lock on. If you lock on and start rolling around, there he is right there. Uh, if you lock on and start rolling around, uh, your camera does some weird stuff and he usually ends up getting you anyway. Oh, excuse me, sir. Please. I get by. Please let it be a fair fight. Okay, so he does take some pretty sizable damage from our elemental weapon. Great One's Wisdom. So Great One's Wisdom gives you two insight versus the Madman's Knowledge giving you one insight. Uh, the difference is the Madman's Knowledge is uh, insight from a human, whereas the Great One's uh, is from a Great One. open this gate 
And we're coming up on a nice little NPC battle, but I'm going to show you a really easy way to deal with her. Ooh, he almost got me that time. Sedative. Okay, so, if you remember, we picked up some lead elixir earlier. When you're fighting NPCs, lead elixir is the best item you can have on your bar. Basically, they stagger and they have so much poise. So, if you put the lead elixir on, you can just go toe-to-toe -to -toe and beat the fire out of them. And this lady in particular has some really, really strong arcane spells. It's very important that you just stay super aggressive and don't allow her to cast. Go, pop this little elixir. And just trade hits till she dies. There we go. Piece of cake with the lead elixir. Really think that's what it's made for is NPC fights. And some blue elixir. So now we can do uh, some sneaky, sneaky invisibility stuff. Uh, that uh, spell she was using is called Aug Augur of... Ebritis, Ebritis, something of that nature. Uh, we've got a little lore over here. When the red moon hangs low, the line between man and the beast is blurred. And when the great ones descend, a womb will be blessed with a child. So this is a little foreshadowing because as I told you, Rom is holding back the nightmare. Um, once you kill Rom, uh, the people in uh, Yargle Unseen Village uh, they finish the ritual um, I don't know necessarily if they summon the, the blood moon or if killing Rom allows the blood moon to come forward but then they complete the ritual and call forward um, a great one I'd, I'm still not 100% on that because I believe when you when you kill something that's a great one it says nightmare slain or maybe that's only when you're in a nightmare. Uh, either way, when you when you do kill that that particular boss, if they summon, it only says "Pray Slaughtered." So, not a hundred percent on that, but uh, I kind of suspect that he is a great one, or at least spawn of a great one. I know it's a, a iffy subject on the lore. If you know about the lore, please correct me. As I said when I started this series, not super strong on the lore. I just plan on. Uh, you know, explain him what I do know as we go. Uh, and these are just thoughts. Uh, but it does say a womb will be blessed with a child. So remember that. We'll, we'll figure all of that out later. Let me go ahead and head up top. There's a couple items to grab. One more enemy to kill. Lunarium key. There's usually a sign right about here that says behind you. It says behind you. Matter of fact, I don't see the sign, so I'm going to put it down. Empty Phantasm Shell. It is an arcane spell that you will never, ever, ever use. <laughs> we'll look at it, though. Empty shell that applies arcane power to weapons. So, uh, there is no way to get an arcane buff. We got fire paper, we got bolt paper. Don't have arcane paper. So, if you are a non-arcane build, then absolutely you'll use this. And it's the main reason that you'll want to get your arcane up to 15. Uh, there are a lot of bosses that are weak to arcane, so it's very worth having. That being said, if you are running an arcane build, you will never use this because your weapons will already have either fire, bolt, or arcane on them, and there's no way to buff them once they do. So, kind of a useless item for us. Go ahead and head down, and we'll go talk to 
Well, honestly, an icon. Bloodborne. The Narium key allows us to open the door. See here. He's not gonna say much. He's gonna tell us to head on out there. To give us a little insight. Uh, but this is the head of Bergenwork. This is uh, Master Willem, I think his name is. Uh, and him and Lawrence, uh, at one point, you know, he was the master. Lawrence was the uh, apprentice. Uh, and they eventually parted ways. Basically, as you can see by his face, he's covered up his eyes because he believes in insight. And like I said in a previous video, there's two trains of thought in the Bloodborne world, and one is insight or eyes on the inside. And so he covered his external eyes so that he could see more with the internal eyes. Uh, but Lawrence, on the other hand, believed in the blood and the power of the blood. So uh, as we saw in the video, uh, at Vicar Amelia uh, that's when they parted ways when they just couldn't get past their differences uh, of opinion that being said he may be an icon uh, but we're gonna kill him because he gives us something really nice I take a look at that Make additional discoveries. So um, basically, uh, I symbolizes the truth Master Willem sought in his research. Disillusioned by the limits of human intellect, Master Willem looked to beings from higher planes for guidance and sought to line his brains with eye, line his brain with eyes in order to elevate his thoughts. So insight, eyes on the inside. He was trying to get more eyes inside his head versus outside his head. Uh, so basically, this is just uh, more um, item discovery. We don't need it. We're, we're high arcane. But I'll pick it up so I can show it to you. There's no reason to leave him alive. It's not like it's uh, changing your storyline any at all. That being said, if we jump off that uh, ledge right there, that takes us right to the boss. Uh, we do want to do some other stuff in the world first. So we're going to head on back and level up. A uh, few areas I still want to tackle before we do this. Um, want to go ahead and head to Kanehurst. Um, we're going to get a really good arcane tool there. Uh, and then we can use the tonsil stone and actually go to the lecture hall and pick up uh, Augur of Ebriitis. Uh, and beyond that, we can actually get the key to go into uh, Upper Cathedral Ward and grab... Um, another really good arcane tool. It's a, it's a, basically it's a laser you shoot out of your eye. It's pretty, it's pretty nice. Uh, and then there's one more major, uh, hunter tool that we want. And it's, uh, the one that does the multi-projection, multi-projectile, uh, arcane attack. So let's head back to the hunter's dream and we'll go ahead and level up. Where's that doll at? I think she's at that grave over there. Go ahead and repair our weapons. You can see only 90 there. We only used it a few swings though. And using it a few swings took it down to 92 out of 100. Uh, from what I gather on the Tenitris, when you buff it is when it really loses durability. Being said, you pretty much just want to use it when it's buffed. So going to be burning through the uh, durability on it. While we're here, um, we're not really using the flame sprayer anymore, and I don't see any reason to with the weapons we have. I'd rather use my twin bloodstone shards on Hunter Pistol. You don't gain a whole lot of damage, but you do gain some damage. Uh, we never want to use chunks on it, you just want to leave it at plus six guess since uh well we have enough 
could uh, bring up the Hunter's Torch. We'll never use it for Hunter's Torch again. We'll just uh, give a level with the Flame Sprayer. We have our, our two weapons that we really want. Uh, as I said earlier, I don't know if I want to do the Moonlight Sword or not. Uh, we'll cross that, bridge, cross that bridge when we get to it. I'm going to change this out, though, because I think, yeah, we've got a pretty decent weapon there. Blood, uh, blood Gem, Blood Attack up 12.6%, so we'll pop that on there. And let's go grab some levels. Welcome home. What is it you desire? I desire more levels. Very let's do well. it. Let me. All right, time to pump a little bit more into Vitality. And you can see every point of Vitality really gives us a lot more health now because of the rune we have Farewell, on. Farewell, good hunt. May you... And while we're here... We have a choice here. I've got 10%. We'll eventually get 15%. Or we can add an extra 5% HP. What I'd really like is have more stamina. Because we do run out of stamina. So in place of the Blood Echoes, I'm going to put the other Anti-Clockwise. Which we'll be changing out to the 15% after we get that one. But as you can see, we definitely have a much larger uh, stamina pool now without really having to invest in stamina. Short sword, we've got a lot of swings. We were stuck with three swings before, now we've got four. Charged R2, followed by another R2. And we still have time for, uh, we still have stamina for another R1. Or, before it would drain us, now we can quick step or roll out of the way. We still have stamina for that. So, uh, that last little bit really does help. Give you another, another swing or an option for evasion. Okay, so, uh, we are at 27 minutes. So we'll go ahead and cut the episode here. Uh, sorry there wasn't a boss, guys, but in the uh, next video, we are going to... Um, well, I think the best course of action is Kanehurst. Uh, Kanehurst will get a really good arcane tool, uh, and uh, from there, uh, we will probably uh, head on into the Nightmare to um, the library. Uh, lecture hall, excuse me, lecture hall, and grab um, auger of uh, Ebriatus there. So uh, join me next time and we'll take out uh, Kanehurst Castle. Uh, until then, appreciate y'all watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe or leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know how you're liking the series. Um, you know, correct me on my lore. Uh, teach me something about it. Uh, like I said, I'm not really uh, strong on lore. I just, uh, I enjoy the storyline. So uh, I share the, the bits that I do know or think I know with you guys. So uh, start a co uh, conversation down below and correct me. Uh, and until, uh, until next video, I appreciate y'all watching. See you later.